Good evening. My name is Brandon Wagner, and today we're going to be talking about Mary Dyer and the article from Monster to Martyr, representing Mary Dyer. Now, while most U.S. historians have heard of Anne Hutchinson, how many have heard of Mary Dyer? Well, Mary Dyer was one of her very close friends, closest followers, along with her husband. And we're going to look at the history around her because there's a lot of interesting history, especially on her early writings and writings about her, that seem to be glossed over by today's historians. Well, some of the earliest writings about her comes from John Winthrop, who describes her as being very proper, comes from a privileged background, very fair. At the same time, he states that she's very proud in spirits and much addicted to revelations. Now, coming from him and she being a woman of the time, that proud in spirit can be seen as a negative thing, especially in the eyes of John Winthrop and most Puritan males of the time. Winthrop writes about her in public record in 1637 as the mother of a monstrous woman child, one with a fish of a beast and a fowl all woven together in one and without a head. This was a miscarriage or a stillbirth that happened and it's recorded as having some deformities. Uh, happened just around the time she was cast out with Anne Hutchinson. They had a secret burial of the baby and after they cast her out, they dug up the infant body and Winthrop describes it and shows it to everybody. And this could be a lot of slander on Winthrop's part, but he made sure to write letters about it and publish it and send it to local newspapers and again, slander her. There's also talk that because Hutchinson was the midwife of Mary Dyer, was the reason why God was punishing her for this birth. And this was showing that her heresy going against the Puritan religion is what caused these births. Now, later in 1638, Winthrop continues to write about Hutchinson giving birth to about 30 monsters, some of them with strange shapes, some of another, few of any perfect shape, and none of human shape. Again, these could just be slanderous things that Winthrop is using against Hutchinson, who he saw as a threat to his establishment. But this is again something that we see documented and he again uses this as an example of God's punishment. Now, prior to 1652, the only writings that we have about Mary Dyer come from John Winthrop. Uh, after she is expelled with Hutchinson to Rhode Island, she ends up leaving back to England in around 1652, and that's when we start seeing written accounts from her. Uh, while in England, sometime around that time, she converts to Quakerism. That's when she takes on this new religion. She is said to have uh, heard a Quaker speaker and really related to that religion and gravitated to that, so she became a Quaker. Uh, in 1657, she decides to go back to rejoin her family in Rhode Island. But of course, first stop is Boston Harbor. And uh, Boston, at this time in Massachusetts, they have a hard anti-Quaker law, which would usually be either expulsion and or death if they had threatened to come back. So she comes into Boston with a couple of friends. Uh, who are also Quakers, who start preaching, and immediately they are all arrested. Spend some short time in prison. She is expelled back to Rhode Island. Uh, her friends are still in prison, so she decides to go back after she's expelled to Massachusetts to talk with her friends. She is immediately arrested again, and at this point now she is threatened to be executed. Uh, Upon her second arrest while she is in prison, she is actually marched to the gallows. Um, and right before she's marched to the gallows, these are where we get some of the earliest accounts and only surviving accounts of early Quaker females from this time period here in colonial America. And they are letters of protest to the Massachusetts government. So we get a lot seeing of how how she feels, she's really attacking the Massachusetts government, talking about how there's blood on their hands, that they are punishing loyal followers of God, that these are innocent people, innocent Christians, innocent loyal followers of God. She wrote two protest letters to the governor, 
Uh, just as she's being led up to the gallows, she gets to witness her two Quaker friends being executed first. And as the rope is going around her neck, she's spared last minute from a protest from the crowd. And also probably because her husband was friends with the governor and she had some family connections who got her off the hook. She is sent back again, expelled to Rhode Island with the threat of death if she ever returns. And after protests from her family, when she's in Rhode Island, she has that conviction. She has to go back. She has to go back, continue preaching. She goes back. Sure enough, she's arrested right away gets into prison, and this time, the very next day, with her unrepentant Quaker attitude, she feels that this is the true religion for her. She is led to the Boston Commons the next morning, and she is finally hung. Third time's a charm, she's finally killed. So Mary Dyer, according to the Quakersoftheworld.org, she is known as one of the Boston Martyrs, which were four Quakers who were executed around that time, including her two friends earlier. She's also going down in history as the only Quaker woman to ever be executed. Uh, Edward Burrow, who was a primary source at the time, describes her execution and last words, where she states, Nay, I come to keep blood guiltless from you desiring you to repeal the unrighteous and unjust law made against the innocent servants of the Lord. Nay, man, I am not now to repent. So there is the story of Mary Dyer, definitely an interesting historical figure, female woman who really the whole story of Anne Hutchinson, it's hard to ignore her story as well. Highly recommend you do some research on her. Thanks for watching. Bye.